So this is the bike I've been riding for the last couple of months, predominantly here in the US. I've done some road racing, some crit racing, some big epic mountain days. So what I thought we'd do today is have a generally fun chat about what is on this bike. And ultimately ask the question, was this the right package of bike to travel with? Now I said chat, not review. And that's really for one specific reason. The frame and the wheels were lent to me by the distributors of those in Australia. Now I was under no obligation to do any content on the product, but if that compromise is too much for you, I totally understand. So this frame is the Chapter 2 Coco in a white and gray colorway at 175 centimeters or five foot seven. I chose a medium frame with an effective top tube length of 548 centimeters. The frame weighed out of the box 1120 grams. The wheels are reserve 5263s, which use the Sapham CX Ray Aero spokes laced to DT Swiss 240 hubs. There are some external nipples and the wheels tipped the scales at just under 1600 grams. Now I swapped out the Chapter 2 proprietary mana bars for a set of Fastport F1s, basically due to the limitations of the mana bars dimensions and the availability of the fast sports in the dimensions I like, the 38 times 120 setup. The bike was built by Edwin at Cache and he moved my Shimano DIT group set over to the chapter two. He also came up with a really neat solution for the bars given the head tube is designed to fit with those mana bars rather than the fast sports ones. We installed my original SRM power meter with a 5440 Shimano front chain rings and the rear cassette is an 1134. Now we initially installed a 28 mil front and a 30 mil rear Continental GP5000 tubeless tire. However, I decided to move back to the 28 rear, which I should add, I mounted successfully at home with a floor pump. Each tire has at least 80 mils of Stan's tubeless sealant in them, while the pedals are my Time Expresso 12s, which I have set to some zero float cleats. When racing, I ran the tires at 55 PSI front and 60 PSI rear. However, the majority of my riding, including the big days with Tyler, I've been really in the high 40s, both front and rear. I was literally about to say in the voiceover, Hey, these tires have been great. I didn't get a flat. The last day riding over here, rear flat, just had to plug it. So don't put that in, Chris. The saddle is a Stella Italia SLR Boost, which I have slid as far back on the rails as it will allow me. The awesome Nero wrap is once again courtesy of Bunny Hop Cycling in Sydney, with the crank and the crank arm wrap being the first time Peter's ever done that. And I should say three months in, it is holding firm. And finally, a 3D printed Garmin Varia mount courtesy of the guys at Concentric Cycling. I'll drop a link to them down in the description below. Super cool little company out of WA in Australia. And the weight of the bike as pictured with pedals, computer mount and bottle cages is 7.7 kilos. All right, so let's talk about some of the interesting specific stuff that's going on with this bike. And the first one is this really weird seat post thing. The theory is that the longer seat post and the vibration dampening insert essentially increases the compliance. But guys, in all honesty, given my wheel choice, the tire choice, my PSI choice, it's really impossible to comment on that success. It's a really smooth, compliant bike to ride. Look, if you force me to compare the ride quality, the ride feel of this bike to something else, I would probably suggest the Factor O2 van. Even the way the bike feels under you with the chunkier lines and the chunkier tubes, really different to the look of, say, Tyler's Aeroad or Jeff's Scott Foil. So let's move on to these reserve wheels, the 5263s. And guys, I can't stress enough what an impact the wheel tire configuration has made really to the overall impression of my bike. So the internal rim width of the front wheel is 25 mil, meaning when I put my 28 mil tire on that, the Continental 28, it's measuring over 30 when pumped up to over 50 PSI. Look, the reserves are unashamedly aero. In a fast paced group ride or rolling through some of those super rough corners at Alviso, they were in their element. At the Patterson Pass road race, which I did, which had some 20 minute climbs, some five minute hard steeper climbs. I got over all those climbs in the lead group. And interestingly enough, 
I made that final selection on a false flat downhill, you could argue using some of the speed that those, those wheels were giving me. But actually what concerned me most about bringing these wheels here was not necessarily the racing side of it, but just the general riding. How would they perform as general riding wheels? Okay, this is one of these situations where it's really hard to remove yourself from a lot of the press, and then that then impacts the way you, you feel about the bike. Obviously, one of the biggest concerns about running a deep dish wheel is how does it get affected in crosswinds, gonna race, whatever, you're just full gas, deal with it. But if you're just out riding, can be a bit of a punish. I'm not sure if it's the research that they claim to have done in that crosswind stuff, or it's just the reality of having lots of tire under you that you feel more solid on the road. But I have found using these wheels day in, day out, that they are super solid. This setup is an unashamedly aero setup. The reality of a 7.7 .7 kilo bike on hour long climbs, I go slower. Here are some, some interesting sort of readouts from some of the Strava segments that, and I've got some wattage, which is pretty comparable. Jesse and I discussed this the other day. He said, don't bring this up because you can't compare a segment across years on long 30, 40, 50 minute climbs of percents around seven percent i'm gonna go slow my other concern running this package when i came over here was the gearing as i mentioned i'm running a 54 40 at the front and an 11 34 at the back that gearing works perfectly fine for me in sydney here it's a different story 20 30 40 sometimes hour long climbs on some of those longer climbs i essentially use them as effort but i must admit i don't like riding endurance on climbs i find you just get really hot and sweaty so you're almost better off just using them as an effort and look guys the trade-off is having that 54 for the downhills it's just fun and road bikes are fun and the faster you go the more fun they are so ultimately i don't have any regrets from running that gearing over here and to go further into the weeds here are a couple of rides the exact same route from year to year to year that i've done in this particular part of the world the worst of all types of indicator i'm just going to show you the average speed and you can make up your mind on those ultimately i was really happy with the setup and i wouldn't change anything about the gear and the equipment that i brought over i made it pretty clear on the show in the last couple of months that i'm really i'm really leaning as far as i can go into the aero stuff and i want to i do want to kind of see what that threshold is but honestly i still think the benefits far outweighed the cons for me and i had a ball i got to do all these different type of riding these big climbs everything down to stupid little car park crits and i all did it on the one bike with the one setup with the one tires and for me that's kind of cool anytime someone on youtube gets in front of a bike and starts talking about it really ultimately you start comparing the bike that they're talking about to other bikes in that market and that's that's honestly the most challenging part to this bike. But if there is any kind of uniqueness to this package, I think it's it's this simple. The first really is the geometry of the frame. I think that is unique. It is different. It is a point of difference. And with the wheels, I think this is the route you go if you want wider tires, wider internal rims, and you don't want a hookless setup. Now there are like-minded competitors for just those factors that I mentioned, but I have not ridden them, I have no experience of them, so this is all I can offer in this particular circumstance. And finally, two last things. I just want to quickly thank Reserve and Chapter 2 for giving me the opportunity to ride these wheels so I can do this and talk about it. And the second, guys, is let us know your thoughts down below. Did you enjoy this style of thing? I would like to throw a little bit more of this kind of content on the channel as we go along but it's going to be slow content because i want a minimum of three or four or five or six months riding racing these bikes before i'm willing to get in front of you guys and talk about it right guys thank you so much for watching i have done some reviews in the past click on up here for those and obviously the neuro show click up here for a full playlist you can do a deep dive into the neuro show all right guys see you real soon hey